This is Shuttle Launch Control. We are in the final hours of the STS-38 launch countdown at this time. Everything is proceeding smoothly here in firing room 3 in the launch control center and at launch pad 39A. Liftoff of Atlantis' seventh mission into space will occur sometime during the four-hour launch period that begins one hour from now. Mission STS-38 is dedicated to the Department of Defense and all mission objectives and details are classified. For a nominal end of mission, landing will occur at Edwards Air Force Base, California. The day, of the day and period of landing will be announced approximately 24 hours after launch. This launch will mark the fifth launch in darkness in the history of the shuttle program. STS-8 in August of 1983 was the first night launch. The second was 61B in November 1985. STS-3 launched last November was also a night launch. And the most recent one was this year in February on mission STS-36. The five-member flight crew for mission STS-38 is currently on board the vehicle. The commander is Richard Covey, a colonel in the United States Air Force and a veteran astronaut who was pilot on the STS-26 mission in September of 1988. Atlantis' pilot is Navy Commander Frank Culbertson, Jr., who will be making his first trip into space. Two of the three mission specialists are rookies, U.S. Army Captain Charles or Sam Gamar and U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Carl Meade. Mission Specialist Robert Springer, a colonel in the United States Marine Corps, flew on the STS-29 mission in March of 1989. The crew has been preparing the orbiter for launch and has made voice checks with test conductors here in the firing room and with flight controllers in Mission Control Houston. In the last few hours, the external tank has been loaded with its flight load of a half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants. There were no problems at all during our tanking operation, and the eight-member ICE team has made an inspection of the vehicle and measured temperatures of the vehicle and launch tower. They reported no anomalies and that they are ready for launch. The only other issue that has occurred during our countdown was... Uh, a unit that is used at the launch pad to provide cooling air to the vehicle. It's a piece of ground support equipment. Uh, did fail and we had to replace that with another spare that was completed in the last couple of hours and we do have two units up and operating for tonight's launch. This time there are no issues being tracked by the launch team and uh, we do have a four-hour period for this evening's launch. We will be playing back a videotape at approximately 5.45 this evening of the flight crew having breakfast, donning their flight suits, and departing for the launch pad. The tape is approximately three minutes, and we will start playing that tape at about uh, 5.45 this evening. It is a pre-recorded tape of events that occurred e earlier today. This is Shuttle Launch Control. At this time, there is a 30% chance that we will violate our RTLS crosswind level of 12 knots, and that we're keeping a close eye out on that. Current time, the forecast is favorable, and uh, we've got Scattered clouds predicted in the area. Winds are easterly at uh, about 14 knots, peaking to 22 knots. The expected temperature is uh, about 70 to 75 degrees, and we're expecting about 7 miles of visibility. This is shuttle launch control. Now looking at the flight crew for STS-38 earlier today. Got uh, mission specialist Carl Meade making his first trip today into space. Mission Specialist Robert Springer, he's making his second trip into space. Commander Richard Covey. We've got uh, Pilot Frank Culbertson making his first trip into space tonight. And uh, Mission Specialist Sam Gamar, who was recently promoted. He's now a major 
in the United States Army. The table is uh, the STS-38 patch, crew patch insignia is on the traditional cake in the center of the table. The patch was designed to represent and pay tribute to all men and women who contribute to the space shuttle program. Top of the orbiter has the stylistic orbital maneuvering system burn. This is the flight crew getting ready in the suit up room. They are assisted with their launch and entry suits. Mission Specialist Carl Mead. Pilot Frank Frank Culberson giving a thumbs up. Suits are rather bulky and the flight crew does need assistance getting into them. This is Commander Richard Covey. It's uh, Mission Specialist Sam Gamar and Mission Specialist Robert Springer. Crew now departing the operations and checkout building. Commander Covey, Pilot Culberson. Mission Specialist Sam Gamar, Carl Mead, and Robert Springer being greeted by employees here at Kennedy Space Center. Astronaut Dan Brennan also rode uh, out with the flight crew. He is going to be flying in the shuttle training aircraft this morning, checking out weather patterns in the area prior to our launch. Astronaut Van now departing the ONC building. Again, this was a pre-recorded tape of events that happened earlier today. Crew is now on board the vehicle and has made some checks, voice checks, with test conductors here at, in the firing room and also with mission controllers in Houston. All is continuing to go well in our countdown this evening. No problems reported. This is Shuttle Launch Control. This is Shuttle Launch Control. All is continuing to go well in our countdown for the Space Shuttle Atlantis and Mission STS-38. We've just uh, had the opening of our launch period for this evening's night launch of the Shuttle Atlantis. This is the seventh dedicated shuttle mission for the Department of Defense. This will be the fifth flight for the Space Shuttle program this year. We do have one more launch plan this year. That will be for the Space Shuttle Columbia and the Astro payload scheduled for launch on mission STS-35 sometime in the next few weeks. The external tank is full. We are in a stable replenish mode. All tanking operations went nominally. We had no problems during our tanking operations. No leakage at all. Flight crew is aboard the orbiter and are in the final making final preparations for tonight's launch. They are preparing the vehicle for flight. All test team members are on station here at Kennedy Space Center. We, we do not have any issues with uh, weather tonight. We are go at this time. We will check in with the mission control operations at this time and get an update on what's going on from our commentator there in the mission control room in Houston. This is mission control Houston, uh, currently in the T minus nine minute old. Uh, flight controllers here have uh, completed a poll of all positions following review of launch and abort landing site weather conditions and the orbiter system status check. Ascent Flight Director Lee Briscoe has declared the flight control team go for launch. 
The team here will continue to monitor orbiter systems throughout the remainder of the count, standing ready to take control of the flight at SRB ignition. This is Mission Control. Back here at Kennedy Space Center, all continues to go well in our countdown. No problems at this time. This is Shuttle Launch Control. And it's lifts off from the pad. The tracking stations provide, which provide launch support, will provide air-to-ground voice data and telemetry. During launch, the Milo tracking station at KSC can follow the vehicle for up to eight minutes. The Bermuda station can also see the space shuttle after about four minutes. Also, the Ponce de Leon Inlet Station near New Smyrna Beach becomes the primary communications leak during the second minute of flight when the signal at Mila is being attenuated by the reflective plume of the solid rocket boosters. Everything is continuing to go well in our countdown. The flight crew is aboard the space shuttle orbiter at this time. In the later part of the ascent portion of flight, NASA's tracking station at Dakar will support from the east coast of Africa. Once orbit is achieved, all communications will be through the pair of tracking and data relay satellites, one over the Atlantic and the other over the Pacific. Weather continues to look favorable at this time. No issues for weather. All continue to go smoothly in our countdown for mission STS-38. This is shuttle launch control. We're now at T minus nine minutes and counting. This is shuttle launch control. The ground launch sequencer has been initiated from now until T minus 31 seconds when the handoff is made to the orbiter's onboard computers. The ground launch sequencer is part of the orbiter's launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the onboard computers, which then report back that the commands have been executed. T minus 8 minutes, 30 seconds. Just prior to coming out of the hold, a number of status checks were made. NASA test director pulled the primary test conductors and astronauts to determine whether we were ready to pick up the count. As and uh, mission management team chairman Brewster Shaw conducted a poll of the mission management team and reported the results of the poll to the space shuttle launch director, Bob Seek. Also got to go from the various team members here at Kennedy Space Center. Just past the eight minute mark in our countdown for tonight's launch. T minus seven minutes and 30 seconds coming up. We have a go for retraction of the orbiter access arm. Ground launch sequencer will be slowly retracting the arm away from the orbiter hatch. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to enter the orbiter. If there is an emergency, it can be moved back into place in a very short period of time. T minus seven minutes and counting.
Pilot Frank Culberson will be asked to set the switches in the cockpit to the pre-start position for the auxiliary power units, the APUs, at the T-minus six minute point. There are a number of switches and he will verify with controllers that they are in the proper position for starting the APUs at the T-minus five minute point. T-minus six minutes and counting. And Frank Culbertson has been asked to initiate the pre-start procedure. All is going very smoothly here in the final minutes of the STS-38 countdown. T-minus five minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Pre-start is complete of the APUs. Coming up on T-minus five minutes. T-minus five minutes and counting. We have a go for APU start, and Pilot Culbertson is now flipping the three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three auxiliary power units. Commander Culbertson has been asked to reconfigure the orbiter heaters for launch. Culbertson now reporting the APU's start is complete and that they look great. Covey also reports that the heaters have been positioned and configured for start, for launch. Coming up on T-minus four minutes. And we have a final purge sequence underway on the three main engines. Main engine valves will be configured for start. The orbiter flight control surfaces, such as the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder, are now being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. T-minus three minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. All three of Atlantis's main engines are now being gimbaled, which is a steering check to verify readiness for flight control. When the check is complete, they'll be aligned to their main engine start positions. T-minus three minutes and counting. T-minus two minutes, 30 seconds. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is being retracted away from the vehicle. Pressurization of the liquid oxygen tank has begun. T-minus, coming up on T-minus two minutes and counting. Crew has been told to close and lock their visors and have a good flight. We have a go for pressurization of the liquid hydrogen tank. Just passing the 90 second point. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, 90 seconds from launch.
All systems are go and no problems for tonight's launch. T minus one minute and counting. Heaters on the booster joints are being deactivated. T minus 50 seconds and counting. T minus 40 seconds and counting. T minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15. T minus 10. 9. We have a go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis and crew in the classified Department of Defense flight. Houston now controlling. We're all under underway. Maneuver complete. Placing Atlantis on the proper heading. All systems performing well. Engines at 104%. Engines throttling down now to help these aerodynamic loads. Three engines is 72 percent. Altitude 13, 14,000 feet. Velocity 934 feet per second. Engine throttling up now. Altitude 7.4 nautical miles, downrange distance 5 nautical miles. Crew given a go at throttle up. Engine's running now at 104%. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Altitude 11.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Minute 45, altitude 16.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 16 nautical miles, velocity 3,600 feet per second. SRB thrust beginning to tail off, a precursor to solid staging. We have separation confirmed. Standing by for first stage performance call. First stage performance of main engine and boosters uh, were good. Altitude down 36.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 56 nautical miles, velocity 4,900 feet per second. Two engine pal call. Atlantis can now reach the primary transatlantic landing site with only two engines if necessary. Altitude 44.4 nautical miles, downrange distance 82 nautical miles, velocity 5,700 feet per second. Three engines continuing to burn at 104%. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Time 3.35.
Negative return. A return to the launch site is no longer an option as Atlantis continues downrange, 120 nautical miles, altitude 51.7 nautical miles, velocity 707,000 feet per second. Three engines burning well at 104%, three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Four minutes, 40 seconds, all systems continuing to work very well. Three engines at 104%. Downrange distance now 175 nautical miles, altitude 56.7 nautical miles, velocity 8,500 feet per second. Five minutes, 30 seconds. We're now three minutes away from any engine cutoff. Main engine's continuing to burn well at 104%. Downrange distance now 255 nautical miles, altitude 59.5 nautical miles, velocity 10,000 feet per second. Crew told to press to ATO, that means Atlantis can now reach a safe orbit uh, in the event of a single engine failure. Time 6 minutes 15 seconds, altitude 59.8 nautical miles, downrange distance 335 nautical miles. Crew's given a press to Miko, Atlantis has now gained enough momentum to reach the normal engine cutoff targets even if one engine should fail. Three engines continuing to burn well at 104%, three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Crew given a single engine towel call, Atlantis can now make a transatlantic abort landing even in the event of a two engine failure. Three engines continuing to burn well at 104%, downrange distance now 418 nautical miles, altitude 59 nautical miles, velocity 15,000 feet per second. Time 7 minutes, just a minute 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, all systems continuing to work very well. Atlantis can now reach a safe orbit uh, with only one remaining engine should two engines fail. Three engines continuing to burn well at 104%, three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Engines beginning to throttle back uh, to maintain 3G structural limitations on the vehicle. Downrange distance 580 nautical miles, altitude 59 nautical miles, velocity 20,000 feet per second. Time 815, standing by for a main engine cutoff. Miko confirmed, main engines have cut off as planned. Atlantis now 768 nautical miles downrange, altitude 60 nautical miles, relative velocity 24,000 feet per second. Three good APUs continuing to work well, three good fuel cells. We have ET SEP confirmation.
Atlantis Commander Dick Covey describing the arrive as spectacular, nominal, nominal. Atlantis and crew now off the external tank. Powered phase of flight uh, was picture perfect. Absolutely no anomalies to report.
Thank mm-hmm. you.